Shalom and welcome back to the Rashi Nash. I'm Pastor Matt. And I'm Kara. We're so glad to be back with you this week. And this week we're in a brand new book of the Torah. We're in Vaikra or Leviticus. So, you know, every time we, we end one book of the Torah, we say Chazak, Chazak, Vanit, Chazek. Be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. And and we're we're going to pray that that we're going to strengthen each other as we move on into this new book. Now, what's interesting is this is the book that Jewish children start learning from from the time that they start learning the Bible. This is the very first thing that children learn. It's the book of Vayikra or Leviticus. So this week's Torah portion is called Vayikra. It's the first portion of this book. And we're going to look at this first verse of chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 1, and we're really going to, only going to look at the first half of the verse. The verse says, He called to Moses, and Hashem spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, now into verse 2, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When a person from among you will bring an offering to Hashem, and then it goes on. But specifically, I want to look at the first part of verse 1, because it says, He called to Moses. Of course, the implication is this is God calling to Moses. So, He called to Moses, and Hashem spoke to him from the tent of me meeting, saying... Now, here's what Rashi says about this. He called to Moses. Calling preceded every statement, and every saying, and every command. It is a language of affection i.e. language that indicates affection, language that the ministering angels use. As it says, one called to the other and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. But prophets of the other nations of the world, when God revealed himself to them, he revealed himself to them in language of transitoriness and impurity. As it says, God happened upon Balaam. It doesn't have this language of affection. And what the commentary on Rashi, this is an elucidation of Rashi, says here, is that this is saying that it's calling Moses by name. And it's interesting. It says, he called, and then it says, Hashem spoke, and it appears redundant. But remember what we've talked about many times. Whenever the Bible seems redundant, it's not really. There's an economy of words in the Torah. And so if it says something twice, it's because we're supposed to pay attention. So it says that he called and Hashem spoke. It appears to be redundant, but Rashi explains that he called indicates that the speaking which, follow, which follows was made endearingly. The call consisted of a loving pronouncement of Moses' name. Now, this is something that's very interesting. Whenever a parent calls to a child by their name, it is done with endearment. Um, there are really only a couple people in the whole world that refer to me as my full first name of Matthew. Most, most people call me Matt or Pastor Matt, Moray Matt. If they refer to me in a Hebrew context, Moray Matan. But very rarely do people call me Matthew. There are times that you call me Matthew. Uh, my parents call me Matthew, and Rabbi Shapira calls me Matthew, and that's pretty much it. Um, and maybe Millie, our dog, maybe she calls me Matthew. I can't remember what she calls me. But anyway, um, when you say someone's name like that, especially parent to child, it is a term of endearment, or it's a way of speaking in an endearing way. We chose our children's names. Um, I think you chose our first child's name, mm -hmm. Callie. Uh, I think I chose Ian, and I think I also chose Hannah. But uh, we gave Callie uh, a middle name, which referred to your grandmother. Mm -mm. No, I'm sorry. That's uh, Hannah okay. to your grandmother. Callie, we gave the name Joy for her middle name because it reminded us of how your dad named you Kara because of its relation to the Greek and meaning joy. So we named her Calissa Joy. Uh, Ian actually is his middle name. His first name is Robert because my father is a Robert. His father was Robert. There are lots of Roberts going back in our, in our family. So we choose our names very carefully for our children. And so when we call our children by name, it's done with affection. Now, what's interesting is it doesn't work the other way around. It's not a sign of affection if one of our children were to refer to us by our first names. It's just not done. 
It's not something that's proper. It's a sign of respect to call us by what essentially is a title, you know, to now it's an endearing title. They don't call us father and mother. In English, they call us mom and dad. It's, it's a little more informal, but they don't call us by our first names. Now, why do I bring this up? It is affectionate when Hashem calls out to Moses by his name. And it reminds us of when he calls out to Samuel by his name. It reminds us of Yeshua when he says to Martha, Martha, Martha. And Rashi says here that he calls to Moses by using his name twice. The same is true with Samuel. The same is true with Martha. There's this old Jewish teaching that says that anyone who has their name pronounced twice by the Lord, that they have a portion in the world to come. They're guaranteed a portion in the world to come. The reason I bring this up is there are people that try to pronounce the, the holy, unpronounced name of God. And they think that this is somehow uh, bringing a, a closeness or uh, showing affection. But if it's not something that the Jewish people do, then it's not something that we do. Um, this is a tradition that we just don't have, which is why it says here, Hashem spoke. Whenever we see in a Jewish Bible where it says the word Hashem, it is that four-letter name of God that we do not attempt to pronounce, known as the Tetragrammaton. And whenever people in the Hebrew Roots Movement say some form of what they think is a pronunciation of God's holy name, I always say, do you call your father by his first name? Do you call your mother by her first name? It's actually less respectful yeah. to try to, to... There are many names of God. You know, call him El Shaddai. Call him Elohim. Call him one of the other... Call him El Elyon. Call him one of the other names. But there's this one particular name that we don't even attempt to say. We've forgotten how to pronounce it. And just as an aside, I've told you this before, but it's an acrostic for a much longer name, a 72-letter name of God that we just don't know how to pronounce. But there's this saying that when the Messiah comes, that he'll, he'll teach us how to say it, and then, and then we'll know. So this idea of God calls to Moses, and he speaks to him in an endearing way. And I think that is such a beautiful thing that the creator of the universe is going to speak lovingly to us. You know, there's that verse in Zephaniah that says that the Lord sings over us, that there's a song that he sings over us. This is the type of beautiful parental language that we have. Now, there are times when a parent, or we as parents, could call out a child's name and it is not done endearingly. Mm -hmm. There are times when we have to get a child's attention by saying their name in perhaps a more stern way. I'm sure we can think of times in our, uh, in our lives, in our family's home, where we've had to do that. And wherever you are in the world, at least in my country, we have uh, a first name, we have what we call a middle name, and then we have our surname, our last name, our family name. And there's kind of this joke in our culture in the United States that if you ever get called your full name, if my mother or father were able, were ever uh, able to say Matthew Todd McEwen, well, then you're in trouble. Oh, big trouble. <laughs> Did that ever happen? I, maybe I shouldn't ask. Did that ever happen with you when you were younger? Uh, not too often, no. <laughs> my brother, however, maybe. Oh, <laughs> calling out the brother. Well, listen, boys, I think we can get yeah. into a little trouble. I uh, I come from a family of three boys, and I will tell you, we had we had an all right time with only one boy in the house. We were balanced out with the other two girls. And, and I can honestly say, I don't think there were many times in our kids' lives when they were younger where we had to say their name in a stern way. I can't really... I think the only time is... tiny, you know, and just learning, but... And, and I don't think with, you know, you mentioned your brother. I don't ever think I had to say our son Ian's name in a stern way for behavior, uh, like for him being disobedient. But I think I probably did uh, have to maybe say his name one time when he was attempting to jump off our roof. Potentially. Uh, yeah, just maybe to keep him out of danger or something. <laughs> so here's an encouraging thought for you. The Lord knows your name. He knows you by name. He knows you personally. And he calls out to you. He beckons you by name. 
this is something that is uh, is so meaningful to us. Yeah. You know, Yeshua says that the shepherd does this to his sheep, that he calls each of them by name, and they all know his voice, and they all follow him. And when one sheep goes off and gets lost, it is that good shepherd that goes off and gets the sheep. So when Hashem is addressing Moses, it's done in an endearing way, yeah. in an affectionate way. If you have a spouse, speak to them lovingly and use their name in an endearing way. With your children, with a parent, with a loved one. There's probably nothing more loving and intimate that we can do in conversation than to use someone's personal name in a loving and affectionate way. So maybe that's a good lesson for us here on the Rashi Nash for you to call out, call out to someone, speak their name as was done by Hashem and as was done by Yeshua. We hope this has been a blessing to you and we are praying for you no matter where you are around the world. And the coming months later on this year, we'll be doing some more traveling and we're hoping to come and see you where you are in your country. I did want to especially shout out the nation of Indonesia today as I am wearing one of the beautiful shirts. It is called a batik uh, from Indonesia, a beautiful gift from the people there to me on my trip and I'm so very thankful. Whenever I wear this, I think of you. So know that we are praying for you there and all over the world, wherever you are. We wish you shalom and all of the best to you and your family. Kultuv.